Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Hope you all are grinding well in Warframe. Now before we move on, I'm just gonna push a gentle reminder that if you do enjoy the content over here or find the videos helpful, then please consider subscribing. I mean, it's free content that I put effort into making that doesn't cost you a dime. It would help me a lot too if you could join the community over here. The peeps are friendly and very helpful as well. So anyway, back to some Fortuna content and in this video we're gonna be delving into matters regarding mining. I'ma teach you three things in this vid. How to maximize mining efficiency so you spend less time out in the Valis. Mining strategies based on some lengthy research I did with a focus on rare gems like Zodian and Thyst. And finally, tips on how to improve your timing to hit those bonus spots much more frequently. Alright, let's prepare for our mining stint out in the vast Valis. While it is possible to use your dusty old Nosam cutters, please just get the Sunpoint Plasma Drill. 2500 standing, that's all it costs. Just get it. Please, that's like the minimum requirement. Plus, you can use this plasma drill to get Eidolon gems like Centaurums out in the plains. So it's kind of like the mining tool for all purposes. The same cannot be said of the advanced Nosam cutter for use in the Valis though. While it serves its purpose well out in the plains of Eidolon, using it around in this freezing wasteland will not get you any of the rare gems like Zodian and Thyst. Those will be excluded from the drop table, which could be useful actually, so you might not want to toss this back at old man Sumbat just yet. I'll explain more later on. I do also recommend you bring a solid melee weapon with good damage, attack speed and range especially, like a polearm. Personally, I bring my beloved Zaw out with me uh, just about everywhere. It destroys pretty much anything in this game. I find that mining in caves is the way to go. You could look for ore veins out on the surface but that exposes you to enemies that drop from ships, coil drives or even just a squad of moas wandering within range. It doesn't happen all the time but when it does it's just purely annoying. Now I'm not saying that caves are completely immune of enemy spawns, a lot of them have those mini arachnoid spiderling thingies, but it's a lot easier to deal with enemies, even a bunch of them, in caves because of the naturally narrow and tight spaces. You can easily reach them with a polearm for a quick 2-3 second massacre before going back to that blue ore vein. So be sure to have that sunpoint drill and a good melee. Now I don't think I have to explain much on how mining works, basically it's just a timing minigame and I actually like this system compared to the old model where you had to trace around random patterns on the ore veins. Still, I can understand why some of you may prefer the older system as not all of us are quick with our reaction times, in which case let me know what you think of this new mining system down in the comments. Now the challenge with mining in the Valis is getting the rare gems. Some of them seem to be much too difficult to obtain. I've read people getting Thice gems left and right but not even seeing a single Amorast. And vice versa even, the comments are kinda mixed. The point is if you're just mining for gems in general and not in a rush then you don't really need any strategies to be honest. Actually if you're not in dire need for a specific ore then I recommend you just put off mining altogether until one of those resource boosters drop from the daily logins or sorties or whatnot. It's just a lot better that way. Now would getting a resource booster be worth it? Well it's either a big yes or no, depends. A 3 day resource booster costs 40 plats. Based on my test results you can potentially get hundreds and maybe even thousands of gems if you're really committed. I even think it might kinda be overkill to get a resource booster so just wait for those things to randomly drop from sorties for example. Definitely do not buy gems with platinum directly. On average they cost about 7 to 20 plats which is better used for slots IMO whereas in trading I think the going price for an Amorast is like 2p, meaning 20 plats would get you 10 Amorasts. Now let me just tell you I managed to obtain more than 80 Amorasts while making this video. No boosters whatsoever. So unless you really value your time or just don't have enough of it, 
and hate the grind, then trading plats for gems is not worth it in my honest opinion. Right, for those of us who do have some time to spend, the first strategy involves maximizing efficiency. Basically, just getting as many gems in the shortest time possible. More like finding the right balance, if you will. If you're interested in rare gems only, which you probably are, then my advice is to simply skip through most of the ores and just tap on the nodes or highlighted spots, completely avoiding the minigame. I call this the tap and go method. If you're mining for Zodian or Thyst, for example, even a perfect attempt will net you one, or if you're lucky, two of those resources. Just tap once and you'll get the same amount. I can definitely confirm this and you can try it out for yourselves. Even if you're trying for more common stuff such as Ravorides, on average you'd get about half or a little above half of what you'd normally do with a perfect try. Now the time savings with this method can be massive, making it well worth the slightly less resource count. You can save somewhere between 3 to 10 seconds per ore vein. Now it all depends on how many nodes there are and where the target and bonuses are positioned. But let's say you save 3 seconds every time. In my experiment, I mined 120 ore veins which means this strategy of tap and go would have potentially saved me 360 seconds. That's 6 freaking minutes. If I took let's say 3 seconds to mine a single ore vein, that means I'd be able to go through a further 120 ore veins with the time saved. And that's being a little conservative with the uh, 3 seconds. A lot of the times you save even more, well, time. Now there is an exception to this strategy. If you spot one of those bonus nodes, then play it as you would normally. That bonus helps out a huge lot because while you can only get rare gems on blue veins through normal mining, hitting those bonuses can also drop stuff like Amorast even if it's on a red vein. It's almost a guarantee that you'll net something rare if you can hit those bonuses. And speaking of hitting those bonuses, it's okay if you miss a couple every now and then, or miss a lot of them. They're difficult and there's no special trick to getting around them. Just get good, it's okay, no need to beat yourself up, it's just a bonus. If you miss it, there'll be others for sure, just take it as practice. Though, for a tip, I say focus on the area just before the bonus spot. I find that keeping my eyes around here allows me to time it right like 8 out of 10 tries. If you're on PC, then make sure frame rates are as high as possible. You might even want to turn off VSync to further reduce latency, but depending on your setup, that could help you a lot or make no difference at all. Also, I feel like claw grip helps with reaction times when I have to lift off my finger in a split second, but you may think otherwise, which is perfectly fine. Let me know anything you feel that helps you with nailing those uh, bonus spots. I'd love to read that and I'm pretty sure that the community will appreciate it as well. One more thing on mining efficiency. Personally, my favorite spot are these three caves between the Harindi Crater and the Orokin Dig Site. They're not too far from Fortuna and I find it a lot more effective to just blast off with an Arcwing, complete a run over there and then return to Fortuna. Rinse and repeat. Of course, you can explore the whole map if you want to, but for me that gets really, really tiring, so it's more of a personal preference. Now, going back to the advanced Nosam Cutter, I've read a lot of people saying that using this over the Plasma Drill helps with uh, getting a lot of Amorasts because it eliminates other rare gems like Zodian and Thys. I've tested this thoroughly and here are my results. I mined a total of 120 ore veins with each tool, so that's a total of 240 ore veins. Of course, I kept the number of blue and red veins equal between the two runs, a total of 80 red veins and 40 blue veins for each run. I got a total amount of 870 units of resources with the plasma drill and 856 units with the advanced Nosam cutter. So it's close enough, keeping in mind that this experiment is not 100% Accurate. It's almost impossible to do that and I'm certainly no god when it comes to mining, 
my mining skills are average at the very best so I guess this is fairly representative for an average player. That's also why I decided to mine 120 veins. Most of Fortuna felt emptied out by the time I was done with each mining tool. I think 120 is a big enough sample size to minimize margins of error which can be pretty big over here. If you actually think you can grind harder than that then maybe you need a girlfriend. Okay so as you can see here there's not a whole lot of difference for the amount of Amarast obtained between the two mining tools. 43 to 41. Really guys, if you're having a hard time farming for this, then I suggest practicing more on hitting those bonus points as they do provide a good amount of Amarast a lot of the time. For those resources like Goblite, Veneral, Hesperon and Phasmin, there's no significant difference between using the Sunpoint Plasma Drill and the Advanced Nosam Cutter. You do get a good chunk more of Oxidite and Noctrol with the Plasma Drill but you get a lot more Trevorides with the Nosam Cutter. So if you're specifically mining for common gems then maybe the Advanced Nosam Cutter could prove useful. As far as Amarast is concerned there is pretty much no difference, at least not in this test. And finally as expected no Zodians or Thais obtained with the Nosam Cutter. And even with the plasma drill, the amount I obtained isn't really something I'd call a lot. This is why I advise on using or waiting for a resource booster to drop before you go mining. There is no other way to increase the amount of these rare gems other than improving your efficiency, aka get more done in less time, aka the tap and go method. Note that I did not use the tap and go method when performing this test, just mind as usual but let's say I was to maximize the amount of Zodian and Thais gems. If I saved time and mined twice as much, I'd have 14 Zodians and 24 Thaists. With a resource booster that would add up to 28 Zodians and 48 Thaists, which is not bad at all. I don't remember any part or item or even weapon requiring more than 10 of either of these gems. If there is, do let me know guys. But the amount I obtained is, I feel is adequate. So to conclude in all but niche cases, the Sunpoint Plasma Drill is a must. It's best to go mining when you got a resource booster and if you're looking specifically for Zodian, and Thaist then the tap and go method will help out a great deal. Also I spent many hours making this video so I'd appreciate a thumbs up if it helped but also feel free to leave a thumbs down if appropriate and let me know which part sucked. Subscribe for more Warframe and don't forget the Instagram page for more amazing content, links down in the description. Thanks so much for watching, see you guys in the next video.